um, Laurie Hagee, who's going to give us a, a rundown of, of some of the background behind the work that's happened at the Tanning Garden since the <coughs> founding of the State of Bering. Um, over to you, Laurie. Thanks, Michelle. Looking at uh, Botanic Gardens uh, organisations worldwide, many, though by no means all, have associated scientific programs. As we've heard, the State of South Herbarium of South Australia was established as part of the then Adelaide Botanic Garden just over 60 years ago in 1954. Uh, and we'll be hearing more about the history of the State Herbarium from Graham Bell later this afternoon. My task today is to provide an overview of the complementary botanical and scientific activity in the botanic gardens outside the herbarium over this period of time. Uh, when Noel Lothian was appointed director in 1948, the Adelaide Botanic Garden had been languishing for two decades or more in the aftermath of the depression of the war years. The scope of activities at the garden uh, was largely limited to presenting landscape, garden and floricultural displays for community enjoyment. But that was not always the case. Uh, in 1855, the first director, uh, George Francis, saw the role of the new botanic garden as a place for the trialling and display of plants of potential economic importance and uh, for botanically informative displays, as well as a place of pleasant refuge. Uh, among other things, Francis helped establish the Acclimatisation Society and uh, began building up a botanical and horticultural library to support his work. Succeeding uh, Francis as director in 1865, Richard Schomburg developed the garden significantly over two and a half decades. He built up a, a museum, or a built a museum of economic botany, which displays uh, plant products, uh, but also at that time uh, with a herbarium. He sent specimens of native plants for study uh, of the Australian flora to correspondents interstate and overseas and contributed to the botanical and horticultural literature. During uh, Schomburg's tenure, a chair in natural sciences was created at the newly established University of Adelaide, shifting any focus that may have developed on study of the native flora away from the garden. When Morris Holtz succeeded Schomburg as director in 1891, the garden's scope was further curtailed with the state facing economic difficulties from the mid-1890s. In the early 20th century, a growing herbarium accompanied expanded botanical studies at the university. John McConnell Black, working independently, emerged as the leading authority on the floor of South Australia. By the early 1930s, much of the library built up in previous years at the gardens was placed in the keeping of the State Library and what remained of the herbarium collections was given into the care of the university. This brings us back to 1948 and uh, a newly appointed Noel Lothian, passionate about plants and influenced by experience as a student at the Royal Botanic Gardens Kew with its rich history of botanical and horticultural science. Lothian immediately began creating a broadly based institution in which horticultural experimentation, education and developing knowledge on the native flora accompanied reinvigoration of the garden plantings. He established the garden's botanical and horticultural library, engaged technical staff and acquired herbarium specimens of South Australian and other plants. Partly during seed collecting expeditions, he led often into remote areas of the state. By 1954, as we've heard, he had succeeded in establishing, establishing the first time a state herbarium for South Australia. In the meantime, other areas of investigation were also being pursued, such as techniques for propagating plants, 
germination studies and investigation of diseases in ornamental plants. Lothian established a horticultural technical and advisory section which was to operate for nearly half a century. These were the beginnings of the complementary scientific and botanical activities of the botanic gardens. Lothian himself contributed articles to a wide range of horticultural and natural history journals and continued to do so throughout his 32 years as director. With increasing emphasis on reliable identification of the plants growing in the gardens, a herbarium of cultivated plants was established in 1966. A plant pathologist was appointed in 1969. This position uh, immediately proved its worth when the incumbent, Dr. E.M. Davison, made the first detection of the occurrence uh, of the root rot fungus, the introduced root rot, fun rot fungus, it's a tongue twister, um, Phytophthora cinnamoma. T.C. Lee succeeded Davison in 1971, maintaining the laboratory's role as an important facility for Phytophthora work for 30 years. He also cooperated with colleagues in the agriculture department using tissue culture as a tool for plant pathology investigations and applied similar techniques to the micro propagation of new ornamental varieties. The position was discontinued when he retired in 2001. In 1975, Brian Morley became the first appointee to a new position of horticultural botanist. In this role and subsequently as assistant director and later director, Morley contributed to the taxonomic and descriptive literature of, on cultivated plants. Uh, Morley initiated and with state herbarium botanist uh, Helmut Tolkien co-edited the collaborative work Flowering Plants in Australia, published in 1983. It provided a copiously illustrated account of the vascular plant families of Australia with keys to genera. Um, subsequent horticultural botanists included Ed McAllister, Laurie Hagee and Trevor Christensen, each involved in various projects on plants relevant to cultivation, including the first botanically verified catalogues of the plants of Watunga and Mount Lofty Botanic Gardens and the first uh, catalogue for the Adelaide Botanic Garden in 35 years. In 1999, the herbarium of cultivated plants was incorporated into the state herbarium and in the last 10 years, the gardens has managed without a horticultural botanist. When in 1986, the gardens assumed responsibility for the Black Hill Flora Centre, a new era of laboratory and glasshouse studies led by Manfred Gesaitis began. It included introducing native Australian species into horticulture, notably the stirp pea as a container plant and cut flower. Uh, this work is summarised in a semi-popular monograph on stirp pea written by Manfred with State Herbarium Associate David Simon. Tissue culture and other techniques were also used in conservation biology in time, extending to the preparation and implementation of recovery plans for threatened species. Um, with the, oh, and, oops, and they, uh, those reports had graphs, so they must have been scientific. <laughs> and they were. I mean, there was no suggestion they wasn't. With, ch with changing uh, government priorities and the drying up of grant funding, this work has, in recent years, largely come to a close. I just feel as though what I've missed in my, among my few slides is, is a recurring one of the Grim Reaper. Um, early in the 21st century, Stephen Forbes took office as director, while a new direction emerged internationally for botanic gardens, uh, long-term germplasm storage of wild species for conservation outcomes. In Adelaide, the South Australian Seed Conservation Centre, initially headed by Phil Ainsley, has been steadily building up a seed bank of the state's native species. Uh, and um, with a priority on threatened species. 
while pursuing associated lines of research in seed biology. Uh, Jenny Guerin will be speaking on this work here tomorrow afternoon. Well, what of the future? There have been four main streams of scientific work in the botanic gardens over the last 60 years. Plant pathology, cultivated plant systematics, plant biology and conservation biology, and lastly, seed biology and conservation. Each of the first three proved to have a life of around 30 years. Their co-occurrence for 15 years from around 1986 to 2001 probably marked the time of the greatest diversity in scientific uh, activity since the founding of the Botanic Gardens. But as in the past, lean estate budgets and changing priorities have seen this narrow again over the last decade or so. As the remaining uh, element, the Seed Conservation Centre has, to date, been able to sustain a robust thread of quality scientific output, a clear focus, relevance to long-term biodiversity conservation aims, a diversity of funding partners, national and international cooperation, and a clearly stated strategic direction. Uh, to an independent observer, these seem to be very good criteria for use in planning the future development of science programs at the Botanic Gardens. Thank you. Sorry, go, yes, please elaborate. No, that the, the, the oh, yes, yes. Um, yes, well, he, uh, T, T, there was that, that, um, that work that uh, TC Lee did, uh, which I mentioned very briefly, I think, uh, and, and that was directed partly at... Um, at the Phytophthora work, um, there was, uh, he, he provided a, an important service there for, for doing uh, analyses in, both in cultivated plants but also in native vegetation for, for detecting Phytophthora, the, the, the survey work that was done. Uh, but uh, TC also worked uh, with colleagues in the Department of Agriculture on a, on a range of uh, experiments mainly relating to fruit and nut crops uh, at, at that time, as well as diseases in ornamental, uh, re sort of recording diseases in ornamental plants. Thanks, Laurie. Can we disentangle your... Certainly. Uh, I'll let them leave. Yeah. 